Good evening. You're watching the news at 7:30 on ATV. I'm Raymond Yeo. And I'm Bo Leung. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Protests outside school that says it will take in abandoned mainland boy. Heavy rainstorms cause chaos and disrupt transport across the city. And government announces plan for lawmakers to meet mainland officials for talks on political reform. Dozens of activists staged a protest today outside a primary school, which is planning to enroll a mainland boy who has been staying in Hong Kong illegally for the past nine years. They called the school and the lawmaker helping his case traitors who are jeopardizing the interests of locals. <laughs> Dozens of protesters chanted slogans outside a primary school in Wong Tai Sin. The activists, who belong to civic passion and Hong Kong localism power, are furious after the school arranged an aptitude test for a 12-year-old mainland boy who has apparently been staying in the city illegally for nearly a decade. The group is calling the school's decision to admit him unfair, as the boy will take resources away from local children, whose parents pay tax to subsidize public schools. They placed banners and signs at the entrance after nobody from the school would speak to them. Earlier, they stormed the office of unionist lawmaker Chan Yun Han, who helped the boy and his grandmother when they surrendered themselves to the immigration department on Thursday. The boy was issued temporary papers, which means he will not be repatriated until a lengthy investigation is completed. The protesters are calling Chan and her pro-Beijing Federation of Trade Unions traitors of Hong Kong and accusing them of compromising the interests of locals and migrants who arrive by legitimate means. They fear that if the boy is granted right of abode, it will set a precedent for similar cases and open the floodgates for illegal immigrants. Some even waved British colonial flags. After learning there was no one at the office, they stuck up some slogans and left, but threatened more unspecified action. We will be some uh, action, but I can't tell you that uh, what we, we do, we, we can discuss with another uh, localism uh, party or another party to, to, to discuss about what we do. Education chief Eddie Ng said the protests are regrettable and unnecessary. He said authorities are working on the case and will have the boy enroll in a school if he meets the requirements. Government sources suggest there will not be a decision any time soon, owing to the amount of investigative work that needs to be carried out. The Amber rainstorm warning signal was enforced four times today. Heavy rain has caused floods and affected travel by train and plane. Vicky Wan reports. Kerala coded heavy rain alerts have been enforced all day as the city was battered by thunderstorm and downforce. Flooding has been reported in northern new territories, especially Santin, Altair May and Shengshui. The observatory reminded people in the affected areas to take the necessary precautions, such as staying away from water courses and listening out for flood sirens. The Education Bureau announced that classes at all evening schools have been suspended for tonight. MTR said some trains to Guangzhou East from Hong Hum have been delayed. Passengers who bought tickets can get refunds if they want. The airport authority said hundreds of flights were cancelled or delayed. Passengers are advised to contact their airline and check for updates before heading to the airport. The observatory says there will be more heavy rain and thunderstorm tonight. The city is expected to be drenched throughout the rest of the weekend and the Buddha's birthday holiday on Monday. Vicky Wen, ATV News. Chief Secretary Carrie Lam has invited all 70 LegCo members to visit Shenzhen on the 31st of this month to meet mainland officials to discuss political reform issues. The lawmakers will meet Hong Kong and Macau Affairs Office Director Wang Guangya, mm -hmm. Basic Law Committee Chairman Li Fei mm -hmm. and Liaison Office Director Zhang Xiaoming. The government hopes the meeting will break the deadlock over its political reform package. Earlier today, local delegate to the National People's Congress, Rita Fan, echoed the government's rejection of a blank vote plan for the public to reject chief executive candidates. Marcus Chi reports. 
Local delegate to the National People's Congress, Rita Fan, said today that it's too late to consider alternatives to the government's political reform package, which may increase its chances of being passed by lawmakers in LegCo. Over the past few months, some academics have suggested allowing blank votes to indicate the public vetoing nominator candidates. This is said to allow Hong Kongers more say on their choice of chief executive. There has also been talk about changing corporate votes to individual votes in the nominating committee elections. But Fan said it is inappropriate to propose such changes now when the consultation is in this last stage. She added the opposition politicians don't support these proposals. Uh, none of these suggestions uh, so far, as far as I could hear and see, receives any support from the pan-democratic camp. She also pointed out that the concept of changing corporate voting to individual voting is ambiguous. That vote could be the vote of uh, directors of the board. It could be the vote of the management of the company. It could also be the vote of every employee, everyone involved in the company. Now, these three kinds of vote actually are totally different. Democratic Party member Lord Chi Kuang addressed the same issue on the radio today. Speaking on RTHK, he urged his fellow party members to find a new way that is acceptable to most Hong Kong people, pointing out there's still a month left, so plenty of time to come up with a compromise. Political analyst Yip Siu Fai echoed the need for compromise on a radio show this morning, saying neither side is willing to make concessions. The political reform public consultation panel continued its hearings in LegCo today. People Power member and radio program host Tam Tak Chi was kicked out for using offensive language. Marcus Chi, ATV News. Former security chief Regina Ip has suggested creating a special area for mainland immigration officers at the West Kowloon station of the new railway to Guangzhou. But she says mistrust between Hong Kong and the mainland is making it difficult, Vicky Wan reports. The debate about whether to set up a joint immigration checkpoint for the new railway to Guangzhou is still dragging on. Speaking on a television program today, New People's Party chairwoman Regina Ip compared the issue to the joint immigration terminals in Sheko for the Hong Kong Shenzhen Western Corridor. Local customs officers have been operating on mainland soil at the cross-border terminal there since 2006. Travelers just need to get out of their cars once to clear immigration processes. The former security chief suggested Hong Kong could mirror the arrangement creating a special area for mainland officers to operate at the West Kowloon station. But she acknowledged people in Hong Kong might not accept such an arrangement. She said establishing a joint checkpoint requires mutual trust between Hong Kong and mainland authorities, which she believes is hard to achieve in a politically divided society. Whether there's a need to change the basic law and allow mainland immigration officers to operate here is a matter best left to professionals, said Abe. She added that setting up a joint immigration terminal in the West Kowloon station would be more convenient for travelers and maximize the advantages of the railway. There is speculation the price tag of the new line will go up to $19 billion, well over the original cost of around $65 billion. It says she understands why the project has gone over budget, as many unexpected factors have popped up during construction. She suggests the government should be more accurate when calculating the cost of future projects. Currently, travelers on trains to Guangzhou pass through immigration before boarding the train and then again once they get off. It's unclear how a joint checkpoint will speed up the process, as the same checks still have to be carried out. Vicky Wen, ATV News. Civil service unions are calling for a review of the system that determines the annual pay rise for government workers. And a batch of the lucky buns used at the annual bun festival was found to contain an illegal dye. The bun festival on Cheng Chao draws tens of thousands to the island every year, drawn by the highlight that scrambled to the top of bun-encrusted towers on Monday night. While the lucky buns that line the towers are made out of plastic, so food isn't wasted, Visitors can purchase real Lucky Buns at a bakery on the island. But the Centre for Food Safety announced today that some of the buns are far from lucky. 
as the coloring used to stamp the logo on them contains red 2G, a banned dye which may cause cancer if consumed over a long period. The tainted batch was only sold at Yi Ma Bakery on San Heng Street, and the operator has been told to replace the coloring. The Pay Trends Survey Committee proposed on Tuesday that civil servants should get a pay rise of between 3.02 and 4.12 per cent this financial year, factoring in the annual pay increments that government workers already enjoy. The actual pay rise ranges from 4.42 to 5.06 per cent. Still, staff unions are less than happy with the results, saying the increase isn't enough to offset inflation which government forecasts say will be 3.2 percent this year. On the radio this morning, Leung Chaoting of the Federation of Civil Service Unions called for an overhaul of the system, claiming it will drive away talent in the long run. Li Kuai-Yin, a staff representative on the survey committee, urged the government to look at more factors, such as the economy and public finances. There was a lucky escape for a taxi driver and his passenger after their vehicle was struck by a flying wheel, which came off a dump truck this morning. The freak accident took place on the Guntong Bypass near Laguna City at around 11 a.m., when two of the back wheels of the truck suddenly became detached from the axle. One of them smashed into the back of a taxi, severely damaging the boot. Both the taxi driver and passenger were unhurt, while the other wheel couldn't immediately be found. Police are investigating the accident. Overseas, the U.S. Senate has blocked both an overhaul and an extension of the Draconian Patriot Act. The law, which is supposed to protect Americans from terrorists, has been criticized for mass collection of data on ordinary people. Marcus Chi reports. While U.S. Senators blocked the extension of the controversial Mr. Patriot Collins. Act, at the same time they refused to replace it with laws to protect people's rights. Some provisions in the Patriot Act, which was passed in 2001 after the attacks on 11th of September 2001, expires next month. Specifically, they allow the mass collection of telephone records of ordinary Americans by spy agencies. The White House has endorsed a House of Representatives proposal to replace the mass surveillance with targeted court approval snooping. For those who want reform and want to prevent the government from holding the data, the Freedom Act is the only way to do it. The House has passed it. The President wants it. All of the intelligence personnel have agreed to it. Senators want to extend the Patriot Act, but with some minor changes. They argue that it's needed to fight terrorism. This is a high threat period, and <clears throat> we know what's going on overseas. We know what's been tried here at home. My colleagues, do we really want this law to expire? Critics point out that almost all the evidence collected from the Patriot Act has been criminal case totally unrelated to terrorism. Marcus Chi, 